it is that time of year. We are chasing spring turkey. It's funny because this is the first year in however many years where I actually have missed opening day. Opening day was Saturday, which was two days ago. But I had stuff to do on Saturday and Sunday, so I couldn't get out until today. So today's Monday. I'm out here with that guy right there. <laughs> That's Steve. And so we have our packs loaded up for three days. We're gonna hunt Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and within the next 72 hours or so, hopefully we shoot some turkeys. We just arrived to our parking spot. We're gonna hike in. We don't really have anything planned for a camping spot. So we're just gonna play it by ear, kind of hunt our way as we hike in. And if we get lucky before we get to camp, we'll shoot a bird or work in a bird. Who knows, it's spring turkey, anything can happen. Super stoked. I'm going out with my bow. Steve's going out with my brand new 20 gauge shotgun. It's gonna be a fun one. Ain't no turkeys here, we're going back. Wrong spot. Turkey's on the road. We called right here. I peeked over because there's a there's bunch. There's a bunch of like finger ridges. Hey, look. Farther up the road, there's like 20 hands on the road and the spreaded out gobbler. Really? Yeah. Like look at look to your left from that corner. Up the road? Yeah. So see that where the churn is? Oh, I see him. Yeah. When the calling doesn't work, glass. So again, we have a bunch of finger ridges. And when you hunt a lot of logging roads like this, always look on the road. People, myself included, I'm always guilty of like glassing in the brush for like deer and elk. But turkeys, blast the roads, man. We have a flock and there's a strutter because we can see them. They're just walking on the main road. And I think they're actually on the road we are on. They're just very far out there. That is funny. <laughs> if we were like half the distance, I'd be like, let's go after yeah. him. But he's. Dude, that's he's he's far because it's not you can't go straight shot you got to do all these zigzag but i kind of want to walk you guys through what's going on in my head so steve and i are parked i don't know maybe half a mile down this way so we got up to this knob it's like a saddle actually where a bunch of roads meet we got up here and again we classed up that tom and like a bunch of hens i was i think there's actually two three different gobblers there's only one strutter and Whenever you're hunting up here, always walk the roads, man, because one, you can cover ground faster on roads, and two, turkeys, as we can see here, they walk the roads, and so if you're trying to pick up signs, whether it's tracks or droppings or feathers, that's where you're gonna find it, right? So if, so if we were gonna be where those turkeys were, we would probably see all their footprints just walking on the roads. It's pretty easy to pick up where uh, these turkeys are gonna be because we haven't heard anything. So now, all we're doing is we're, we're sitting up high, and when you hunt, Especially when you're calling, you're trying to locate birds. You want to be up high because well, you can hear sound better and your sound, your calls can travel better. Versus if you're in a divot or like a little valley, you can't really hear. That's why what I refer to when I do this type of hunting is I call it like ridge top hunting. You're just on these ridge tops and you're just covering ground on the ridge tops, throwing sounds this way, throwing sounds that way. And at the same time, you can glass if they're not responding. So I dropped a pin on those turkeys. I don't really know if I actually dropped a pin on them, but it's around that area. I would assume with how these turkeys are moving, they're gonna move around, they're gonna take that road, they're gonna loop on the backside and they're probably gonna roost on that ridge tonight. But it's so far away and we're probably gonna head this way. So we'll just leave that Tom there. And plus early season birds like that Tom, who has like 20 hens with him, you're gonna have a hard time uh, calling in that bird because he has so many hens that he doesn't have a reason to give up 20 hens to come to you which is one hen. So far, no gobbles, but bird spotted.
first gobbles of the season right there. They're pretty far, they're pretty faint. We have one over here, um, which is where we were originally planning to go. First, he was the one that gobbled to my first one. My second one, we had one up and over this ridge over here, her spawn. You know, there's turkeys. We gotta go drop off camp somewhere. I don't think we're gonna go over here, there's too much snow. Yeah. We'll just, so we'll just go back this way. Yeah. All right, that's the next thing. We need to go drop off camp and we'll go try to work these birds. I see him. I see him. Yeah. Big old strutter. There's a strutter with the hens and then there's a lone strutter. Literally same spot as last year, dude. <laughs> That's crazy, he can hear us. I knew there was going to be birds on that clear cut. Isn't there a crick in the bottom of this canyon? Yeah. There is. Let's camp down there somewhere. Here's the deal. We drop down, and at this point I'm unsure as to which two toms these are. These might be the original toms that we heard from the very top, like the first original one. Yeah, we were just right up here, and we heard them down this way, but it could have just been those same toms gobbling across. Either way, we got them located, and they're on a road. We've been on that road before. There's two toms. There's clearly a dominant tom and a subordinate tom. The tom, the main tom, has like three hens, as far as I could see. And then the other tom has no hens. Yeah, so um, this is this is Ava, by the way. And uh, she has a lot of toms under her belt. But again, I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this road down, get closer to the creek, and uh, we're gonna pitch our tent, drop off the vast majority of the gear, hike up the ridge to where that tom is on, hike in close to him call him in and honestly we might put steve first because that's a pretty tricky spot for a bow because we did it once last year with nate and uh, let's just say it didn't go according to his plan this is steve currently working on his sleeping pad so we've got everything laid out and with the snow our spots are pretty limited as to where we can camp, so we decided to just camp right in this like closed off road. We're not in the center center of it, but we are off to the side of it just because you can't really camp up there with a tent. And up here, there's a snow patch and there's snow patch over here. So we camped here because there's a creek right next to us so that we don't have to worry about getting water every day or having to make a dedicated trip. This is our first time setting up this tent. This tent was sent to me by Argali. This is the Argali Rincon two-person tent. I don't think it's smart to set up a tent for the first time when you're hunting, but I did not have time. So this tent is also with the inner piece. So the tent itself is floorless, but there's also the option to buy the inner floor portion, which is what we have, which is this piece right here. That way there's no ticks that can crawl on us. Steve, this is upside down. I know, I was just trying to get some. Oh. But anyway, it's it's actually a true two-person tent. Most two-person tents are one and a half people, but so far from what I can tell, this two-person ring content from Argali is actually two two person. So it's gonna fit both me and Steve. And on the sides over here, we do just have enough room to put a packs, but Steve also did bring a tarp. So if we need to, we can just use a tarp to cover off our gear here. And then here's all our food. We're going to be here for essentially two full days, 48 hours. So I have one bag of food and a second bag of food. And if I get lucky, or if we get lucky, I brought some hoagie buns. And I got some marinade. And we're going to shoot some birds and cook them up. We're going to have to make a campfire right here because how to cook the turkey for the hoagie buns, we have to cook over a fire. So we are done here. We're gonna, we might snack a little bit and then go find a turkey.
now instead of the bow on our back, bow is in hand. So I'm just gonna make sure that everything is doable. I can't shoot with this GoPro like this, but I'm just making sure that my bow, like everything feels good on it. So. Broadhead is installed instead of a field tip. High noon, Steve and I made it up to the road where we spotted that trio from across the valley. We last saw them like a quarter mile up the road this way. We set up camp down by the valley, hiked up the ridge, or I guess the mountain that those birds were on, got to the same road that they're on. And as we were just walking here, we've seen a lot of fresh turkey sign, feathers, some tracks, some droppings. And what I think happened was this morning they were roosted over here where we came from and they pitch down to this road and they're just working their way like just walking the road it's dead quiet we haven't heard a gobble since when we were on that side yeah. yeah so it's been like three hours since we last heard a gobble but it could just be that we're on the side where we're on the same side they are so that sound just echoes out into the valley instead of to us but we know they're over here so we're just gonna slowly creep away creep over listen creep over listen try to catch up to them we know there's three birds and we know there's only one dominant bird so I've got a feeling that we can at least kill one of the subordinate toms either way we're playing it slow this is what I deem that turkey lull where it's dead quiet you're really unsure of what the turkeys are doing where they are but I think this is what separates people who are successful and people who aren't people who are not successful just give up and go home people who are successful even though there's low probability of killing something they just press on so we're gonna do our best to just keep pressing on it's like one o'clock we have like six hours to hunt
just spotted two toms down in this little flat, maybe like 500 yards below us. It seems like they're coming in, they're not gobbling. We have another gobbler. I think he's on this road over here. We're gonna set up.
<laughs> this was one of the birds that we saw down low. I don't know if it was the dominant tom or the bottom or the uh, supporting it tom. He came in front of me. I knew he was close, but I thought he was gonna walk out to the decoy, but he came straight to us. He kind of played around 10 yards in front of us. He walked over to the right and I was like, Steve, take him. Steve shot him and he just flopped. So we have one bird down. We have other birds over here. Nice palm. Turkeys are so beautiful, man. He shot a pretty nice one. I'm gonna go see. Let's see. Live service. He's a young bird. It, I think he's, he's a two-year-old. Two-year-old bird. Eater, two -year -old bird. Perfect eater. Yeah. Young bird. Doesn't matter. It's a tom. So if you look right here on these feathers, you can see there's like a glint, like a gloss on their feathers. This is often referred to as turkey rainbow. They've got this, when they hit the sunlight, they have this like red slash turquoise gloss on their feathers. It's just gorgeous. This is a tom, he's a young bird. That tom is going off, but we're gonna uh, do some stuff with this guy first. So, yeah, that's probably like a, I don't know, five, six inch beard, very young bird, but it's a tom nonetheless. The reason why we know it's a tom, the reason why we know it's a tom is because if you fan him out, his feathers are symmetrical. If this was a Jake, a one year old male, his two, his like, his middle three feathers, tail feathers would be longer. And all of these ones on the side are shorter than the top three, but you can see they're all symmetrical. So he's a tom. You can see these are still kind of short on the end here but these are that's just because again he's just like literally a two-year-old tom and so he just about achieved his tom fan but he's a tom nonetheless he was a subordinate tom to that big guy down below and i told steve i was like they're gonna be coming up man and so this is often the birds we you get because they're the young birds and they don't have hens because they get bullied around and they are the ones that are desperate for hens so you can tell that this guy has been strutting because when they puff up and they put their fans down on the ground and they kind of like skirt the dirt with their fa uh, wing feathers you can see like it breaks off the tip and so instead of having a nice round feather here it's just like chipped off so you know he's been strutting around he's been strutting around but he hasn't been talking because he knows if he talks he's gonna get bullied by a more dominant bird thank you again Ross from Crazy Elk for these super handy tag wallets so what I'm going to use to attach my tag to this turkey. You guys can see it comes with zip ties and they are reusable because I put the same tag wallet on a turkey a couple miles from here last year. A couple miles was a generous term. As you guys can see, nice and secure. It's not going to go anywhere. So Steve is right here. He's talking about his bird. Celebrate. And I I look back down towards that little clearing where we saw those two birds earlier. And there's still a strutter down there. And I saw two, so I think it might be a strutter and a hen. And I think the bird that we killed was the subordinate tom with that guy. But like I said, this guy came in silent by himself. But the big tom, which I see down there, he had no reason to leave a hen. So he just kind of stayed back and this guy came up and we shot him. He's still down there just in the clearing. Again, we have these birds gobbling to our left over here, so we're gonna get, um, we're gonna pack up and we're gonna hike down the road. We'll put a tab on that bird right there. We still have two more days to hunt, so we don't have to rush anything. We can just say there's a bird there. There's the first flock that we worked up here. There's more birds this way. And so, yeah, one bird down, three to go. I'm just gonna blast first. Worked over one divot, called. We had a bird that was gobbling like crazy. 
and the more we snuck over here we don't hear him anymore he could still be talking it could, he could just be in an area where we just can't hear him so anyway we peeked over into this bigger I would guess you could call this a canyon now and there's like pockets of clear cuts slash roads throughout the timber patches and usually my first thing I do whenever I come out and I can just see something like this is I don't call I just glass because like I said like if the turkeys on the roads you can see them you can glass them up just quickly glassed around no turkeys so we're gonna call see if we could get a response it's really windy up here so I, I don't know how well this sounds gonna travel I don't think this is gonna happen with just what's between me and that Tom right now. But dude, these mountain birds, you can never count them out. If they want a hen, it doesn't matter if there's like boulders and trees and deadfall and creeks, they will come and find you. That's a killable bird right there. The birds where you give them a couple calls, he turns at you and he's, he comes straight to you. Those are the birds that often get shot. This bird is one of them, but like I said, we're so high up the mountain and he's so far down there. I don't know if it's gonna happen, but dude, these birds can cover country. Steve and I, we left our stuff over here. I came over here to look at him. So I should go tell Steve that we should come sit over here just in case he does come in. Pretty standard job on the turkey. Just breasted this turkey out. That's one breast. The other breast I threw on the snow just to cool it off. I hung up the two legs. The last thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna break open his cavity and get the gizzard and liver because that's good stuff. So this is the breast right here, this big piece. And then this little guy right here, this is the actual tenderloin of a turkey. So the tenderloin sits underneath the breast like this on its uh, chest cavity. Good stuff. Just got to clean off all these feathers and cut it up and ready to go. What's up? Yep, I can see it.
Ta-da. Good stuff. Take this knife, just cut right along the side like this. And you're gonna puncture a membrane in there. And this is when you just kind of open it up. And when you open it up, you're gonna pop open that little seal right here. I don't know if it's a seal, but there's an inner membrane right here that protects this part from the digested food. And so just roll it and this piece right here just rolls out from your gizzard and your gizzard is free from all of that stuff. So this membrane right here holds all the garbage and then your gizzard is clean. Nice and clean and then just go out and like pull all of this tissue off, clean it up all nice and tidy, and that's your gizzard. And last but not least, that thing right there, that's the fan. Just cut off from the base of the tail, and then that's your turkey fan right there. I brought a little marinade from home. Never tried this. This is kind of a homemade thing. I just went off of a recipe I found online and then kind of threw my own twist to it. I hope this is enough for how much meat we have. So when you're at home and you marinate something, it calls for you to put it in the fridge. Out here, we don't have a fridge, but we do have nature's fridge, which is this. That'll do for now. The meat is just marinating. Go for it. I need to clean up too. Camp chores are done. But one thing I didn't mention earlier is Steve actually is the very first person to ever shoot anything with my new shotgun. So in the last video, the most recent video besides this one, I was fishing and I went out to also pattern my shotgun and sight in my red dot. I got this shotgun last week picked it up and I said I was gonna use my bow. So I offered Steve if he wanted to use a brand new 20 gauge and he said yes. So that turkey that Steve just shot earlier is the first ever turkey to be taken with a shotgun. And so this is the Rite Gordian 20 gauge. This has the pistol grip. I threw this bare tooth foam piece just because I'm running the red dot on here. So you need this higher cheek piece right here so you can properly look down your red dot. And this Picatinny rail right here comes standard with the Rite Gordian. And then this right here is the Vortex Spark Solar Red Dot. Just an absolute money of a red dot. And then for the shells, I'm shooting these tungsten waterfowl loads just because 20 gauge shock shells are so hard to find right now. So those were the only things I found legal to use this season. And then I just have a Jeb's Headhunter turkey choke on there, 0.560 restriction. And that's it. Simple as that. And it's just, it's a great shooter so far. So Steve's the first one to take one on, take a turkey with a shotgun. On this trip, if my bow is just not it, then I'll resort to this. But I just wanted to mention that because I think it's, it's always a good thing to break in your shotgun or your rifle or your bow. First shot at turkey, flopped him. You might cook kind of make uneven, but whatever. Thank you. 
All right, so Steve tried this right off of the stick. He, he said it's really good. This was my first time doing this marinade, so I have no idea how it tastes like. So turkey breast. Oh wow, yeah, dude. dude! I'm proud of myself. Yeah, I'm impressed. That marinade's pretty good. It's got a little bit of zesty zestiness from the lemon. Lemon. It's got just enough salt and pepper. I'm proud of myself. So the idea is, we're gonna throw these on a bunch of hoagie buns, and I think the ideal recipe is you once you put this on the hoagie bun you would add the remaining marinade on top of it to make it not so dry, but I only had enough marinade to marinate the meat. So we'll just eat this with a hoagie bun. It might be a little dry because I don't have extra marinade, but we'll just drink water. Steve and I are signing off for today. This was our first day in. More like a, I guess you could say it's a full day. We just didn't get the early morning hunt. Shot Steve's bird this morning. We didn't go out to roost, but just from being up on that vantage point earlier, I think we have a pretty good idea of where these birds are for tomorrow. So that's gonna wrap it up for this first episode. Steve and I, we're just gonna hit the sack and then we'll hit it back hard early tomorrow morning. So. Appreciate you guys sticking along. Hopefully in the next video, we get some luck with the bow.